Hello friends, good afternoon to all of you. Welcome back to another session of a covalent bonding, right? So what is our topic is going on? Covalent bonding. Sorry, not any compound, right? So yesterday where we left, there only we let's start our discussion. Okay. That uh, our discussion is uh, what is the uh, what are the properties of uh, any compound? Properties of any compound. So yesterday we started our discussion that any compound performed by the electrostatic force of action. So electrostatic force, whenever you are talking about the electrostatic force, so let me draw here picture. Oh, this is a positive charge. So this positive charge attracts in which direction? In which direction it attracts? Can anyone tell in which direction a positive charge attracts? Can anyone tell in which direction the positive charge attracts? Answer. Sir, options. Why options are required? <laughs> hmm? Okay, east direction, west di or left direction, right direction, up direction, down direction, and all direction, no direction. Tell me. Okay. So let me uh, let me give you another clue here. Okay, magnet. Think about magnet. A magnet attracts in which direction? Answer, please. Sir, both opposite poles attract, sir. Hmm. Okay. I'm sorry to say you that a magnet attracts in all directions okay because magnetic field around a magnet is a three dimensional magnetic field around a magnet is three dimensional that's why it attracts in all directions similarly the electric field around a charge electric field around a charge also three dimensional that's why an electric charge also attracts in all directions Got the point? Got the point. Yes, sir. Okay. So, okay, right. So, electric field and magnetic field both are three dimensional. That's why right. both uh, electric charge as well as the magnetic charge, they attract in all directions. That's why right. ionic uh, bond is non directional in this. It is non-directional in nature. That's why a single molecule is not formed. That's why a single molecule is not formed. It forms a, a huge quantity of molecule form at a time, which we call as a giant molecule. So that's why the nature is water because it is forming a three-dimensional array or arrangement of a positive ion and negative ion. Positive ion and negative ion which are surrounded by each. So yesterday already I told each positive ion that is sodium ion will be surrounded by six number of chlorine ion and each chlorine ion will be surrounded by six number of your uh, sodium ion, right? Because of this uh, nature, because of this non-directional nature of uh, electrostatic bond or ionic bond, it gives a, a crystal structure to the uh, molecule. Crystal structure to the molecule. You can observe this is a crystal structure. We have uh, four crystals a day. So uh, this is positive ion surrounded by one, uh, next to two, next to three, next to four, five, six. So six number is uh, surrounded. So each chlorine ion will be surrounded by six. That's why it is generally exists in solid state. Solid crystalline state, uh, that's why they are uh, uh, very hard in nature because 
strong electrostatic force of attraction holding the two ions together. That's why they are rigid also. They are rigid also. Means uh, they do not change their shape and size in a normal means. They can change, but with a normal pressure, they cannot change. Okay, and they exist generally in what state? The solid state. What state? The solid state. So most of the ionic compounds are solid state, and the structure is a three-dimensional crystal structure. So this is called a unit crystal. And we do take a number of crystal uh, in the three-dimensional arrangement. We call it as a lattice. We call it as a lattice. So lattice is a three-dimensional arrangement of a crystal, which is uh, your uh, the ions are uh, you are uh, surrounded by six. This number, this number, which number? Now each sodium ion is surrounded by six number of chlorine ions. So four will be in the four corners. So this is the central atom. So four, uh, yeah, yeah, four will be four corners, up one, down one, right? So that's why, that's a why this number is called the coordination number. Let me repeat it again. The number of uh, negative ions surrounded by a positive ion, or a number of uh, positive ion surrounded by negative ion, we call it the coordination number we call it is a coordination number so let me write here this is called coordination c o o r d i n a t i o n coordination number the number of ions surrounded by another ion in an ionic compound this is called a coordination number and for sodium chloride the coordination number is 6 So this is equal to how much? Six it is, right? So this is the third point. Coming to the fourth point about the melting and boiling point. So generally, strong electrostatic force of attraction holding the two ions together. That side, it is very difficult to break the bond. It is very difficult to break the bond, right? Then when the bond will broke up, then only a solid will convert into a liquid state. Because in solid, the intermolecular force of present between the two neighboring atom or neighboring ion or neighboring molecule is very strong. It is very strong. But in liquid, uh, it is less. It is rather less. That's why uh, whenever it is going to convert into liquid or gas, some amount of energy is required. Some amount of energy is required to break it. And in case of uh, this ionic compound, because strong electrostatic force of attraction is holding the two ions together, so more amount of energy is required. More amount of energy is uh, required to break that bond, to make them a uh, liquid state or gaseous state. That's why all the ionic compounds they possess very high melting and boiling temperature. Very high melting and boiling temperature. Melting. Point they related to conversion of solid to liquid. Boiling point uh, related to conversion between liquid and gas. Okay, coming to the conductivity. Coming to the conductivity. Conductivity means what? Uh, the ability to conduct, like electrical conductivity, thermal conductivity, right? So we are talking about here electrical conductivity. We are talking about here electrical conductivity. So in a, in case of a, a normal state, because you can observe here, no free ions are available here. No free ions are available here. That's why uh, these uh, molecules uh, never conduct the electrons or never conduct the electricity. Never conduct the electricity through them. So generally, they are bad conductor of electricity. They are bad conductor of electricity because There is no free ions are present, no free electrons are present in the normal state. In the normal state, so no free ions are present, no free electrons are present. That's why they are bad conductor of electricity. But, but, what? Now when it dissolve in water, when it dissolve in 
what are when you are uh, uh, molten them or melt them when you melt them what happen these ions are separated from each other these ions are separated from each other so when you make it dissolve when these materials are like nacl so nacl we need dissolve in water when it dissolve in water what happen now this nacl split up into ions that is your uh, na plus and cl minus this water also split up into ions it also split up into ions what that now h plus and oh minus now you see there are three ions are available when they dissolve in water or they undergo molten state or they undergo liquefied state right so that's why because three ions are now available that's a they are very good conductor they are very good conductor of electricity that's why whenever you touch uh, the electrical box with your wet hand you will get a shock you will get a shock why the water uh, the water is a mineral water the water is a mineral water mineral water means what uh, the water uh, what you are using for bathing purpose drinking purpose washing purpose for cooking purpose all are we are getting from the underground or from the river which is not free from the mineral means in them calcium chloride calcium sulfate magnesium chloride magnesium sulfate sodium chloride sodium sulfate such kind of salt uh, they already dissolved that's why we call it as a mineral water right because of uh, these mineral uh, are present in them or salts are present there as you know very well acid water or acid solution base water or base solution salt water or salt solution are very good conductor of electricity very good conductor of electricity right it is because of presence of these three ions or we call them as mobile ions so these mobile ions are responsible for carrying the electric current through them carrying the electric current through them that's why they are very good conductor in their molten state or dissolved state or dissolved state so this is a point number 5 now coming to the point number 6 about the solubility about the solubility means whether they uh, dissolve in a uh, Uh, all uh, liquids or not so take a pinch of salt does it dissolve in water you will say yes it dissolve in water so what is the uh, pinch of uh, uh, sodium chloride or uh, common salt that is nothing but any compounds that is nothing but any compounds so any compound dissolve in water so what is what is the nature of water the nature of water is a polar solvent what it is a polar solvent so we are going to discuss what is that polar nature right which are slightly ionic in nature which is a slightly ionic in nature let me tell you because we have a, a topic of discussion on this don't worry right so generally all the ionic compounds are soluble in polar solvent like water hydrogen chloride hydrogen bromide hydrogen iodide hydrogen chloride and carbon tetrachloride ccl4 right carbon tetrachloride all these are called polar solvent all these are called polar solvent so they are soluble they are soluble in polar solvent whereas insoluble in whereas insoluble in non polar solvent non polar solvent so what is the in, uh, what is the non polar solvent let me tell you what are the polar solvent so we got what are the non polar solvent like alcohol benzene petrol diesel 
So all these are called uh, non-polar solvents. All these are called non-polar solvents. You can try this and uh, take a pinch of salt uh, and put in uh, kerosene. Put in kerosene, you'll find your, it does not dissolve. It does not dissolve. But you take a naphthalene ball. You take a naphthalene ball and you put the, in the kerosene, you'll find it dissolves. It's a dissolve. And you put the same naphthalene ball in water, you'll find it does not dissolve. It does not dissolve. So it is because of a like dissolves like. It is because of water, let me write here, like okay, so like dissolves like, like dissolves like, means any compounds are soluble in polar solvent, whereas the covalent compounds are soluble in non-polar solvent, right? Because naphthalene is a petroleum product which is a covalently compound. So that's why uh, they dissolve in non-polar solvent. They dissolve in non-polar solvent. Any compounds are soluble in polar solvent, but it's insoluble in non-polar solvent. Whereas covalent compounds are opposite to this. They're soluble in non-polar solvent, whereas they're insoluble in polar solvent. It is because of like dissolves like. So this is the property of a ionic compound. This is the property of what a ionic compound. Right. So coming to the next type. Coming to the next type of uh, bond formation, which is given by. Yes, yeah, tell me. Tell me, anyone have any question? You can ask. Okay. So, yeah, this is all about your ionic bond formation. So, uh, Lewis, yeah, tell me. Tell me. Which water is good to our health, sir? Mineral water or normal drinking water? Are you are drinking water or only mineral water? Okay. So, there are uh, two types of water is available. What are the two types of water? Let me tell you. One is called mineral water, okay? And the second one is called pure water, or we call it the distilled water. What do we call it? The distilled water, right? Which is not used for drinking purpose. Let me tell you again. The distilled water is not used for your drinking purpose or bathing purpose or washing purpose or your any purposes. Why? Because it has only one application, either it is used in chemical lab, either it is used in chemical lab, or it is used in the, in the battery. Because pure water is a bad conductor of electricity. Pure water is a bad conductor of electricity. Whereas Mineral water is a good conductor of electricity. So whatever the water you are taking, either it is filtered water or aqua water or whatever the water you are using in your everyday life, that is mineral water, remember. Okay, which are very good conductor. And moreover, one more point also I want to say. If you drink the distilled water, if you drink distilled water, your food will not be digested. Your food will not be digested. Because for the digestion of the food, water is very much helpful. Water helps in digestion. Moreover, the salt that is present in the mineral water, it helps in digestion also. So it uh, enhances the digestion process. It enhances the digestion process. So if salt is absent, your food cannot be digested. So you cannot drink, uh, so you should not drink uh, uh, the pure water, which we call it a distilled water. So food will not be digested up to certain level. That's right. Uh, whatever the water you are drinking, all are good. Because they are rich with mineral. But salt water contains uh, like chlorine is there. Some hard materials are there. 
okay uh, which should be separated because it uh, creates a problem in our body right that's why otherwise all the water are good clear okay so let's start our discussion about uh, the second option which already we discussed what do we discussed already now there are two options of the one is either permanently donating the electron or second one is your rather the temporary donation which we call as a sharing of electron so this is suggested by g n lewis this is suggested by g n lewis in 1916 1916 g s lewis suggested that the element who are not capable not capable of donating electron and gaining electron so there another option is possible that is called the covalent bond or sharing that is called what the sharing so which uh, result in the formation of another bond we call as covalent bond we call it the covalent bond so how the covalent bond is formed the covalent bond is formed by sharing of sharing of electron between the atoms between the atoms right okay so covalent bond is formed by sharing of electron between the atom who are not capable to donate who are not capable to donate so uh, as you already we got that uh, such an element are capable to donate like metals so which element not capable to donate that is nothing but non metals that is nothing but what the non metals so non metal do not your lose the electron so that say uh, this type of bond is formed between two non metals two non metals generally this type of bond form between two non metals because these are not capable of donating electron that's why sharing is another option sharing is another option right that's why whenever the sharing is occur the bond it is going to form we call it the covalent bond which is suggested by g n liu right okay now whenever we are talking about two non metal we have so many non metal like hydrogen react with hydrogen hydrogen react with chlorine hydrogen react with the bromine hydrogen react with the iodine hydrogen react with the chlorine right hydrogen react with the oxygen hydrogen react with the carbon hydrogen react with the nitrogen right or uh, i can say uh, chlorine uh, reacting with chlorine chlorine reacting with chlorine bromine reacting with the bromine okay oxygen reacting with the oxygen nitrogen reacting with the nitrogen so you observe here whenever we are talking about the non metals right so there are so many options are there there are so many options are there what the distinguish things you are getting here you can observe here there is some uh, uh, difference is there what is the difference now you observe here this is a hydrogen with hydrogen right <coughs> Uh, this is chlorine with uh, chlorine with chlorine. This is chlorine with chlorine. This is bromine with bromine. This is a uh, oxygen with oxygen, and this is nitrogen with nitrogen. So these are the combination between similar metal, a uh, similar non-metal. Hydrogen with hydrogen, chlorine with chlorine, chlorine bromine. Your iodine, oxygen, nitrogen. So these are the these other metal a uh, non metals they combine or they share electron that's why what the molecule will form the hydrogen molecule chlorine molecule chlorine molecule bromine molecule iodine molecule nitrogen molecule oxygen molecule etc right when is the certain other uh, what you are observing the hydrogen is combining with chlorine bromine iodine Because both are non-metal, both are what? Non-metal. Hydrogen with water, hydrogen with carbon, hydrogen with nitrogen. So 
So there different uh, kinds of compounds are forming. What are they? Na HCl, HBr, right? HF, HI. Next a uh, H2O. Next a uh, uh, CH4. Methane gas. What is that? Methane gas. Next a uh, ammonia, NH3. So the difference here. This is the L. Uh, this is the your bond is the, or this is the molecule with the same type of atom. Whereas this is the molecule with a dissimilar type of atom. That's why covalent compounds or covalent bond are of two types. Covalent bond are of two types. What are they? One is called a this. The upper one is called non-polar. This is called a non-polar covalent bond. Non-polar covalent bond. Right. Okay. The second one is called polar covalent bond. Polar covalent bond. <laughs> so there is a two type of uh, bonding is possible here. One is called non-polar. So what is non-polar? A non-polar covalent bond is the here uh, that where the sharing of electron, the sharing of electron takes place. Takes the uh, place. Between two similar atom, similar atom. So when the sharing of electron takes place between a similar atom, similar the atom. Okay, similar atom. We call it as a non-polar. Right. Well, then if the sharing is occur, is the Sharing of electron takes place takes the place between two different atom, two different atom or uh, two dissimilar atom. Then a polar covalent bond will form. A polar covalent bond will form. So all these. Are nothing but called. These are called polar, polar covalent. These are called polar covalent molecules. These are called polar covalent molecules. So which are formed by polar covalent bond. Where so these are nothing but called your. Sorry, ah, uh, not uh, this is not the polar. This is called non-polar. This is called the Non-polar hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, oxygen, all are called non-polar covalent molecules because they are forming by non-polar covalent bond. Whereas these are called polar covalent molecules. Polar covalent molecules, right? Which are formed by Polar covalent bond, which are formed by polar covalent bond, right? So here uh, the sharing occurs between the similar element. Here the uh, sharing is occurred by dissimilar element. So now let us understand the what is the uh, what will be the mechanism? What will be the mechanism? So then uh, we are going to discuss one by one example for my son. Okay. So what is the mechanism? What is the Mechanism of formation of uh, the covalent bond. Right. Okay. The first point, like our ionic compound, like our ionic compound, the first point is your fulfillment of fulfillment of. Uh, Are uh, your the primary requirement? Primary requirement. So, what is the primary requirement? As already we discussed uh, that this type of bond is going to form between it is going to form between the two non-metals. So, here what the 
the primary requirement means your two atom must be non metals must be non metals then only such kind of bond is going to form okay next uh, the second point is that sorted the number of electron sorted for sorted for either duet or octet configuration so how many sorted are there how many sorted of electron you have to check first okay after finding the sorted of electron third point that many number of electron that many number of electron paired between the two between the two to form the bond to form the covalent bond got it this is the and achieve the nearest inert gas configuration achieving the nearest inert gas configuration right so by sharing each by sharing each that means uh, each will contribute equal number of uh, electron equal number of electron for the sharing right then uh, the four point uh, will be represented by eds or lds already i told you eds means the electronic dot structure or lds means least dot structure so this is the mechanism this is the mechanism so let me uh, tell you a small example here okay it is mechanism so that uh, you can have a small uh, experience how to write okay so let us take uh, the example of a formation of hydrogen molecule formation of hydrogen molecule okay so it is very easy to write so first point example number 1 okay formation of formation of hydrogen molecule so how the hydrogen molecule is formed you can say one hydrogen reacting with another hydrogen forming h2 molecule so the primary requirement is fulfilled here right primary requirement is fulfilled here because this is also non metal this is also non metal so first point is over right second point what hydrogen atomic number is 1 electronic configuration is 1s1 right so this is only one electron in its outermost right so which is unpaired electron so eds how do you draw now one dot one dot okay so it is sorted of how many electron one more electron so third point there is a sorted of of one electron one electron for what configuration duet configuration duet configuration of helium we had configuration of helium that's right your each hydrogen each hydrogen will contribute will share how many electron one electron from each side one electron for from each side so how do you represent this now one hydrogen this one and the second hydrogen this one so this is one this is one right So they are sharing so hydrogen with uh, another hydrogen. So this is the bond. This is the bond. Once the bond is formed, once the bond is formed, these electrons will uh, revolve around this and this. So hydrogen now achieves the inert gas configuration of helium, right? And it will form hydrogen molecule. And this bond we call as STD. What is that? You can write cantonment bond. Sorry, this is called single covalent bond. This is called single covalent bond. Right. So here each hydrogen contributing one one electron. Right. This is one of the example of non-polar covalent bond. Now, if you have any question, you can ask. 